right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. Ooh, I punched my lamp. I, I haven't, I guess I haven't done the spread eagle like vlog day thing in a while, uh, at least over here because I just punched my lamp. But anyway, yes, it is vlog day and I've got a vlog planned out for you guys. I think we're going to do all the segments this week. There might not actually be any beer this week. I apologize for the fans of the beer segment. I literally don't have any beer in my fridge, which is a really weird thing to say. I mean, I have beer in my fridge, but it's all beer that we've already had before. I have some of that mermaid's uh, red ale left. I have some of that brown sugar. I have one bottle of that brown sugar left. I have one bottle of the Lagunita Sucks left. I have like literally one bottle or one can left from every pack I've a pack of beer that I've purchased to taste on the vlog. So I don't have any, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't have any new beer. I don't have any beer that we haven't already put on the vlog in my fridge right now. So we might leave the beer segment out this week, but I want to do that thing and I'm going to do it this time where I put all of the time stamps down here for, so you can see, you you know, what's coming up in the vlog, what's here, what's missing. I think we're going to have all the other segments. I have a random juice tasting that I'm excited about. I've got a retro vaping that I'm pretty excited about. We do have a little bit of vape mail, but it's a lot less packages than last week. I think it's only four or five packages this week. Hey, so that's cool. That just means we can dedicate more time to other things like comments of the week. Like, yeah, we're going to do a getting to know Grim Green this week. Yeah, we're going to do some vape or I already said said vape mail. We're going to do some viewer mail this week. Anyway, before we get too far into this here vlog video, I want to do that thing that is my new favorite thing that I love to do where I hear from my subscribers. So right now I'd like to hear from Tristan. Hey Grim Green, just wanted to say love the videos that you put out constantly. Uh, love all the great work that you do for the community. Uh, I know that there was a couple of times people had asked about what to use for cleaning off uh, vapor condensation. Don't know if anyone had ever seen this before, but this is the first time I tried it. Um, it's called Invisible Glass. Um, don't know if this could be a helpful recommendation for anybody, but it's pretty awesome. I tried it as like four bucks and uh, it cleaned off all the condensation in my car pretty quickly. So I just wanted to uh, send send you a video letting you know about it and um, seeing if maybe you could use that or recommend it to anyone else. And also just to say, uh, keep up the great work for every, with everything you do. Uh, you're just an inspiration to myself and a lot of the friends that I know. And uh, I don't know if we would uh, you know, be off cigarettes like we are now if it wasn't for you. So uh, keep it going, man, and just keep on vaping. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Tristan, bro, thank you so much for the kind words. And you, you, you yourself, Tristan, are definitely going to be shouted out. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, bump that fist. Yeah, absolutely. I get uh, I get lots of emails, lots of viewer mails of people asking, like, how, how do I clean this film off of my windows? There's a lot of new vapors now here in the, in the vape community, and it's happening to them for the first time, especially it happens in cold weather. It only ever happened to me when I lived in cold cold weather. It didn't happen when I moved down to San Diego, but back when I lived in the Tahoe, Reno area, and we would get those, you know, just ridiculous winter storms, and it was freezing outside, whenever it was really cold outside and I would vape in my car, you get that uh, VG buildup on your windows. And it, it, like I said, I'm going to repeat myself again, it only seems to happen when it's cold outside. It does happen when it's warm, it's just not as extreme. And so a lot of people are running into that for the first time, or the, it's it's an issue that they've been dealing with and they just never got a solution to. There is one product out there that I use that I, I have a little bit left in my bottle. It's actually lasted me a few years called Exonerate, but it's really difficult to find. It's spelled with an X, X O X. Exonerate, and it works flawlessly, but it doesn't smell great. And I've said this a few times, but it kind of smells like like beef. It, it actually kind of smells a little bit like beef jerky, which is weird, but it does clean it really well. Evidently, Tristan has found this invisible glass stuff that he says works just as well. So I, I know that's going to be helpful to a lot of people. I know it's going to be helpful to me because I am almost out of my meat smelling exonerate juice, liquid juice. No, okay. Sp you know, cleaner. It's a, it's a cleaner. It's not a juice. So I, for one, am really excited about the possibility of this invisible glass actually helping remove the funk and film that VG tends to build up on glass in cooler 
temperatures. So yeah, absolutely. Tristan, thank you so much for that little tidbit of information. It's very helpful to a lot of people. If anybody else has a quick video that they would like to shoot to send over here, maybe you got a, a quick little tip, you know, a little, a little trick you do for vaping. Maybe you want to shout some people out, shout whoever you're, who, shout whoever else. Who, uh, okay, what? Shout out whoever you want to shout out, um, uh, shops and people and things like this. I'm always a big fan of. Maybe I feel like I'm just a little bit out of practice. And I'm like, I'm kind of like stumbling over my words a little bit. Not quite sure what's going on there. I promise we'll try to get back on track. But anyway, this is it. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the vlog. And uh, what I want to do right now is just real quickly talk about what I've been vaping. Not a whole lot of surprises. No changes, really, I think, from last week. Um, first things first, don't need to spend a lot of time on this. It, it's the Meepod. It's the Meepod, and, it, and it's my Meepod. I, I just really like it. And this week as I was uh, cleaning stuff out and swapping batteries and things like that, it's, it's kind of a ritual that I do every Monday as I go through and I, I clean atomizers and I, and I move mods around and I put things on different things just to experiment and try stuff out. I set up that uh, Signature Mods SQ Squonker. It's been amazing. This is topped with that Entheon RDA from Cyclone Mods. This is loaded up with Smacks Lickit and I... I just love it. I just literally, literally love this little combo right here. So good. Oh, so good. I really like a lot of these little single 18650 mods, and these are single 18650 mech mods. There's actually very little difference between something like this and something like a single 18650 tube mech. I mean, battery-wise and switch-wise and safety-wise, there's not a whole lot of difference. And what I like to do on these particular squonkers is I build just a little bit higher of a resistance. I'll build like a 0.2 or maybe go even a little bit over like a 0.23 something like that and what that allows me to do is safely discharge my 18650 well under the amp load and it gives me a cooler vape it lets me take a longer slower vape and it's still I still find it very intensely satisfying and a lot of that satisfaction comes from just the amount of vapor I get but also the flavor of this little entheon before I before I had the entheon on here I had that uh Flav, the Flav 22, and before that I had the original recipe recoil, and just getting that really good flavor with a real long drag. I feel like when you take longer, slower drags, it may be a little bit lower of a wattage, you get to enjoy more of the vapor. Like it's it's a longer experience and and I don't know, maybe I'm getting too weird with it, but that's just what I get out of these uh out of these little squonkers. Love it. Good. Good God, that's good. Last week in the vlog, we also set up that Vandy Vape Berserker Mouth to Lung RDA. Got the little beauty ring on there. Got that wonderful stabilized piss ultim drip tip on there, which honestly, it doesn't really super bother me. I've got this loaded up with 12 milligram Strawberry Circus. It, it's a good really good, surprisingly good mouth to lung vape from an RDA. I've never experienced this high quality of a mouth to lung vape from, a, from an RDA. It, it, it just works. It just works great. I've got this set to the third airflow hole over. There's, there's a whole multitude of airflows on here. It's something we're going to talk about in the full review, which I hope to have done at least within the next two weeks, if not sooner than that. But it's great. It's just great. Mouth to lung, RDA, shocked shocked and and it's great and i need to stop saying great it's really good and neat and it's very very good i've been heavily rocking this other mouth to lung setup this is the baby ness uh the vape envy you know lock ness mini love it loving the size of this it's not perfect there's there, there's a couple little weird things going on with it but we'll get to that when we do a full review i've got it topped with the k fun light plus this is something that is just permanently in in my permanent vape rotation i love it got the bell cap from one of my subscribers andrew and it's topped with one of those little uh you know paquito little uh dhd drip tips on there love it love this setup loaded it up with grim army tobacco it's a tobacco that i have been vaping since 
uh, I don't know, 2012, I guess, and it's just one of my favorite tobacco juices ever. 12 milligram, mouth to lung, K Fun Light Plus. I mean, back in the day, I hate to I hate to wax poetic about the nostalgic past, but back in the day, the K Fun Light Plus was basically like my end game vape. I, I thought this was the only vape that I would ever need. I got my KFUN Light Plus and went, yep, this is it. This this is what I'm going to vape. And I'm really glad that it kind of has uh, stuck around. I'm kind of glad that mouth to lung is making a little, you know, a bit of a comeback for the people that are into it because I love it. Love my KFUN Light Plus. Hmm. So good. And then on the extreme other end of the vape spectrum, I have my Kent setup. This is what I have called my Kent setup. It's my Twisted Messes 24 Pro Series DHD tip. These are 0.17 M Turk Aliens in here. I've got this set to a uh, reasonable 111 watts. And really, it's just a whole mess of really hot, flavorful vape, flavorful vapor into your mouth. It's the way that Kent vapes. And so uh, I call this my Kent setup and it's great. I love it. Wow. So warm. Wow, so warm and vapey. Um, second to lastly, I went ahead and set up that broadside Admiral that we got in the vape mail a few weeks ago. I set this up on my Instagram live stream. I just put some uh, Fiends frame staples in here. It's a two post deck and the, and the posts are actually a little bit closer together, which on a mech, mech mod makes a lot more sense than maybe like that V God RDA where the posts were really far apart. These posts are much close together, real simple to just quickly install all that frame staple. It, it was unbelievable. I didn't have to tweak my wraps in any way. Um, sometimes when you buy coils from from coil makers, people like Coil Turd or Fiends or AJ or, or you know, Turk or people like this, sometimes, not often, but sometimes when I'm installing them in certain RDAs, I might have to like add a wrap or remove a wrap. And that's kind of always a weird process because they wrap them so well that it's it, it's kind of painful and difficult to like, well, I have to take this wrap off and it kind of messes it up a little bit. And you got to oh, go, okay, you got to pull it all tight again and fiddle with it. Didn't have to do that at all with this. It's been fantastic. I like to turn the airflow down on this about halfway makes it less whistly, makes it much smoother, and really gives that warm, warm, saturated, dense vape. This is loaded up with uh, 1885 from Freeman. So I'm on this kick where I like a mech mod glass bottle combo. This, this is it. This is my favorite, favorite way to vape. And so I'm kind of going through every glass bottle that I have and just trying the juices that are inside and if I don't enjoy them I, I dump them out and I save the glass bottle in fact I've got glass bottles full of completely other juices juices that don't come in glass bottles I've got smacks lick it in a glass bottle I just like to transfer them into glass bottles because I think the system for dripping and holding from a glass bottle is really well and I think I, I've said that before but this is a great vape. Uh, it's in hybrid mode, full hybrid mode. There's no 510 or anything in here. My atomizer is directly attached to my tube. There's a 2700 iJoy in here, and uh, it's great. I, I just want to also say that uh, I know this isn't a full review, but I love the drip tip on this on this on this atomizer that I can never remember the name of. It's the Oh, good Lord. Okay, I can't find it anywhere. It, just as a heads up, Broadside Mods, on your website, broadsidemods.com, the name of the atomizer appears nowhere. Ugh. Okay, the Culverin. Good Lord, someday I'll remember that. Sorry, Broadside Admiral Culverin, drip tip. I love it. I love this combo. It's it's just great. God, move forward, Nick. Let's Let's keep this going. Let's not lose our momentum here. Beautiful. Oh, that is a beautiful vape. And then lastly, I set up something that I hope to be reviewing very soon. This is the Kali Atomizer, and it's topped, uh, it's sitting on top of that VGOD Elite 200 watt uh, box mod, which I heard there was a firmware update recently that gets rid of the delay in the switch. I haven't done it yet, so there's still that slight little delay in the switch, which is kind of bumming me out, but this is a great combo. I've got it loaded up with the very last of my Deep Cuts Dragon Shake. I mean, the very last of my Deep Cuts Dragon 
Dragon Shake. And I know I have the tendency to say this a lot, but I also plan on doing a review for this Kali Atomizer very, very soon. It kind of reminds me, airflow-wise, of the original Goon. Just the vape that I get from it kind of reminds me of that original Goon. Anyway, this is a 0.2 ohm dual fuse Clapton on here, 63 watts. It's it's just a great vape. I could probably stand to turn the wattage up a little bit on this, but I kind of like it at 63 watts. It's not quite as warm, not quite as intense, but I take a little bit longer of a drag and it gives me that, uh, you know, flavorful sort of weather system situation going on. A wonderful, a wonderful. Uh, so yeah, that's what I've been vaping. So we're gonna flip this around. We're gonna jump over the desk. It is time for some news and advocacy. News and advocacy, yeah. All right, well, we are here to talk about some news and advocacy on this very like cloudy, rainy Southern California day. Rainy, cloudy Southern California gives SoCal a whole different feel, a whole different vibe. It's a, it's always a little bit cool. It's always a little bit weird. Anyway, I do have some news and advocacy stuff that I wanted to talk about. Uh, first things first, there was a, here, let me get to this. There was a real quick update on that battery case. Do you remember that battery case that I got in last week's vlog? Well, there, there is an update to that. I know who sent it to me now. It was a fella named Andrew and he emailed me shortly after the last vlog and he said, Hey Nick, Andrew here, AKA Sidewind. 911 on Instagram. So funny story. When I sent you the Never Dull, so he he's the one that sent me that uh, that tin of Never Dull that I've been using on to, to polish all my mech mods up. That stuff that I love that you kind of just tear off big fibers of it and you use it to polish. He's the one that sent me that Never Dull. And he said, um, so funny story, I sent you the Never Dull. Amazon saved your address in my saved addresses. So when I ordered a new 18650 case, it sent it to you with without me realizing it. <laughs> he says, I'm not affiliated with the company, but I have four of them and they are the best battery cases I have ever used. I hope it serves you well and let's keep on vaping. Yes, Andrew, absolutely. Thank you for the battery case. I am very excited to use it. I actually have big plans for that on my trip to not just the East Coast, and then I'm gonna go from the East Coast to the UK. I'm really excited to have like a cool brand new battery case, Andrew. So thank you so much for that. Moving forward to some other news and advocacy, I wanted to talk to, I wanted to talk about uh, August 8th and the whole Cole Bishop Amendment thing that's happening. This is something that is happening this month. In fact, it's probably happening here let me look at the schedule real fast March 22nd is when they're actually gonna vote on this so we have one week from today to utilize august8th.org call write and email as many politicians as you possibly can I got an email here from a person named Sullivan and Sullivan says are you for or against the Cole Bishop amendment while restrictions to sale of vapor products to minors is advocated there seems to be possible barriers to vapor Vapor product sale to consenting adults as well. I'm concerned about registry with the FDA by all pr vapor product sellers. What are your opinions? Here's my opinions. Cole Bi I'm very, very intensely, supremely pro Cole Bishop Amendment. It is a critical piece of legislation that if the vape industry has any chance of surviving, this does need to get passed. Obviously, yes, vapor products, you know, uh, restrictions to minors is advocated. Uh, he, he says there seems to be possible barriers to vapor product sale to consenting adults as well. There, there is no language like that in the Cole Bishop Amendment at, at all. There's nothing uh, limiting to consenting adults. This is the Cole Bishop Amendment is strictly to keep vapor products on the market. So right now, as it's written, the FDA deeming rule requires a PMTA, pre-market tobacco application on any new vapor products. The PMTA application is in the millions of dollars to cost. And even if you can afford the millions of dollars of cost of these PMTAs, you can submit it. But just because you submit it, that does not guarantee that you will be 
uh, approved. So a vape company can spend uh, millions of dollars trying to get their products through a pre-market tobacco application and be allowed to sell under the current FDA deeming rule as it's written. But even if you can get those, there's no guarantee that you'll remain on the market. So vapor company just wasted millions of dollars trying to get through a PMTA. And the reason that we have to even go through a PMTA is because they are they have the cutoff right now for vapor products in 2007. So if your vapor product is different than anything that was made in 2007, you have to go through this PMTA process. And it's just not feasible for all these vapor companies to do it. The only people that can afford this PMTA process, huh, Big surprise, people like big tobacco, big pharmaceutical companies. You do have to register all of your products with the FDA. Uh, the Namber Juice products are registered. Vendors are registering their products with the FTA, FDA. It's not a costly process. It is a complicated and obnoxious process, but it's not costly. And registering with the FDA has nothing to do with the PMTA or the Cole Bishop Amendment. And so what I would encourage everybody everybody to do is to go to august8th.org. Get You go to august8th.org, you get everybody you possibly know to go to august8th.org. You, you, you pimp it out on social media. You pimp it out on Facebook and Instagram. You, you just tell random people on the street, you got to go to august8th.org. We have to protect vapor products. And I just want to put this in a little bit of perspective as far as how the Cole Bishop Amendment works. The Cole Bishop Amendment is part of a funding bill. So they have to fund the government. It's part of a budget bill. And included in there is a predicate date change from 2007 to 2016, meaning any vapor products that were on the market before August 8th, 2016 can remain on the market without having to go through a very costly PMTA process with the FDA and the current deeming regulations that they have. And I know even saying that out loud, it's still sounds kind of confusing. And I also want to put something else into perspective for you. So there is not just pro Cole Bishop people. This isn't just, you know, tallying the votes of vapors. Every time someone calls, they don't mark one down and go, oh, there's one for Cole Bishop. It's not, it, it doesn't start at zero. And then as much as we can support it, then that will sway the judgment. There are organizations out there, other advocacy organizations, non-vape related that are actively pushing back against Cole Bishop. It is literally vapors versus them. And so what I have here is a letter that was uh, written to the Committee on Appropriations where this where this bill, I, I believe, started in the Appropriations Committee. This is a, this is a letter to the Appropriations Committee uh, supported by things like uh, the American Lung Association, the American Heart Association, the American College of Cardiology, the American, Ad the American Academy of Pediatrics, uh, Trust Americans for Health, the Society for Research on Nicotine and Tobacco, the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, the American Psychological Association, ASH, the American Academy of family physicians, huge, big organizations with lots of clout, with lots of pull, and with lots of leverage. And they are actively petitioning and, and pressuring politicians to vote against things like Cole Bishop. So the Cole Bishop Amendment is section 753 of this large, you know, uh, bill to, to fund the government. It's, it's, it's a smaller part of a larger bill. It's section 753, 752, section 752 deals with things like uh, premium cigars, you know, premium cigars as well as vapor products came under fire from the FDA and section 752 kind of uh, will alleviate a little bit of that intense regulation on these premium cigars. Of course, these organizations that wrote this letter are, are completely against it, and they're also completely wholeheartedly against Section 753, which is the Cole Bishop Amendment. They wrote on here, we also urge you to oppose se Section 753. They say it would exempt many e-cigarettes and cigars that have come into the market in recent years from an FDA review and evaluation of their impact on public health. This section would take away one of the FDA's most significant tools for removing from the market 
market products that egregiously appeal to kids or pose health risks or safety risks. Last year, the committee included very similar language, which the New York Times documented was written by Altria, the nation's largest tobacco company. Under current law, manufacturers are required to provide information to the FDA so the agency can assess, assess the risks to public health of new tobacco products, which are defined as products introduced to the market after February 15th, 2007. That is the date that we're trying to change. And again, this is very much a vapors versus everyone else pushing back against this. All those organizations that I listed at the very beginning of this little news segment are all against Cole Bishop. They are all against vaping. They are all against keeping these products on the market. And so what we need to do is utilize August 8th to fight back against them. This is literally us defending ourselves. Anyway, uh, I, I can't possibly read this whole article, this whole email, um, but I will link it down in the description below if anybody else is interested in reading it and seeing just how against vaping and just how against even us, even even the Cole Bishop Amendment would, would, would just be one little part of this huge battle they are pushing back against uh, like you can't imagine. Oh, fuck. Okay. Uh, shit. I'm sorry. My, my brother called me and I completely lost track of what I was saying. Uh, August 8th. Here's what I'm going to say. Go to August 8th. Do it. Get everybody to do it as actively as we are trying to support the Cole Bishop Amendment. There are large, powerful groups actively pushing back against the Cole Bishop Amendment. So it is very much an us versus them situation. So again, I'll put links down in the description. You can check it out. August8th.org. Definitely, definitely do that. I also had another little bit of news here from Amy. Amy sent me this over and it is from uh, News LI, which is Long Island. And it's kind of an, it's almost an unbelievable article. I'm going to, I'm going to read the, am I chair too high? My chair's too high. Was I, was I too high the whole time? Come on, Nick, get your shit together. But it's, it's, it's a great article. And I'm going to read the whole thing because it's not super long, but I will also be linking down to it in the description. But the big headline on the article says, Cancer Society Health Groups Calling on Others to Ditch Anti-Vaping Rhetoric in Light of avalanche of research. New York, harm reduction experts encouraged by the American Cancer Society's evolving position on electronic cigarettes are calling on others to ditch their anti-vaping rhetoric in favor of science-based debates. B beautiful. That first sentence is just freaking beautiful. So a few weeks ago, the American Cancer Society completely changed their position on vaping and electronic cigarettes, which is, which is interesting because they continue, even though their position has changed a little bit, they, they still call them tobacco products, but they're much more supportive of vapor products overall right now. But they are pushing for science-based debate. It goes on to say health groups in the U.S. largely remain adversarial towards alternative smoking technologies, despite an avalanche of peer-reviewed research proving the devices drastically reduce the harmful health impacts of combustible cigarettes. Good. Good, good. Wow. This is, uh, this is an article out of the United States. This isn't even something out of the UK. This isn't meanwhile in the UK. This is meanwhile in the United States. A recent shift by the American Cancer Society on vaping, however, is a refreshing step towards informed debate and away from the ideological crusade of many tobacco controllers against e-cigarettes. Dr. Kerry Wade, Director of Harm Reduction Policy for the R Street Institute, argues in a Friday editorial. The American Cancer Society which is historically critical of vaping, issued a position statement February 15th that e-cigarettes on e-cigarettes that acknowledge their safety compared to combustible cigarettes and even argues medical providers should support smokers who are attempting to quit with a vaping device. I, I would just like to read that last little paragraph one more time because reading it completely blew my mind. The American Cancer Society, which is historically critical of vaping, issued a position statement February 15th on e-cigarettes that acknowledges their safety compared to combustible cigarettes and even argues medical providers should support smokers who are attempting to quit with a vaping device. I mean, what? Blown. Mind 
completely blown. I want to cut this out. I want to blow it up and I, and I want to make it like a big desktop wallpaper. And there's also a great quote in here that says, if you're going to tout science, you've got to go where the evidence takes you, even if that means changing your mind. That that, that sentence is unbelievable because that's exactly the way science works. If you're going to tout science, you have to go where the evidence takes you, even if that means changing your mind. For thousands of years, everybody, everybody believed that the sun rotated around the earth. This was scientific fact that the sun rotated around the earth. And it wasn't until much, much later that Copernicus discovered that no, the earth rotates around the sun. This is my theory. I have facts to support that the earth rotates around the sun. And he even got a lot of pushback, especially from, you know, th things like the Catholic church. But if you're going to tout science, you do have to go where the evidence takes you, even if that means changing your mind, Wade says in the op-ed, co-authored by Stephen Greenhut, Western Region Director for the R Street Institute. Unfortunately, we rarely see such mind-changing in public policy, even in supposed science-based policy debates. It's not often that major groups evolve on core issues. And I know I, I said this was short and I was going to read the whole thing, but it's actually, uh, right now, it looks long than I remember it. Uh, the article goes on to say they argue other prominent organizations in the U.S. medical community need to follow the example of the American Cancer Society by changing with scientific evidence. Ample research shows vaping significantly improves health outcomes for smokers, something that should be a priority for U.S. tobacco control groups. Yes! Y yes! In the U.K., government health services are even promoting vaping for smokers as a strategy for slashing their national smoking rate. This is stuff that we, that we know. I, I've reported on this many, many times. Meanwhile, in the UK, we bring up the UK a lot and they are doing a lot to promote vaping. It says scientists at the University of Catina in Italy, which I don't have time to talk about Italy. I want to mention Italy, um, but I'm not going to be able to talk about Italy for very long because I don't, I, I genuinely don't want this vlog to run that long. And I know that's always like the overwhelming arc. And I always, and I do realize right now by even talking about how long the vlog is going, I'm just going to end up making the vlog even longer. But there is a little news tidbit on Italy that I would like to discuss as well. But it does say scientists at the University of Catina in Italy recently conducted a three-year study investigating the effects of regular vaping on the body. On the body? On the body. Their findings, no evidence of health concerns associated with the long-term use of e-cigarettes. Just like to read that again. Their findings, no evidence of health concerns associated with long-term use of e-cigarettes. On blood pressure, heart rate, body weight, lung function, respiratory systems, exhaled breath, nitric oxide, and exhaled carbon monoxide. Research published in the Journal of Aerosol Science in January shows that chemical levels in the vapor released from e-cigarettes were well below the safety limits suggested by both the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and the World Health Organization. The study determines that vaping is statistically 5,000 times less harmful to users than combustible cigarettes. The actual number they use is 5,700 times less harmful than combustible cigarettes, drastically reducing the risk of developing smoking-related illnesses. Ah, yes! Finally, right? This kind of feels like finally, doesn't it? Wade notes that the American Cancer Society still prefers smokers quit using cold turkey or using Food and Drug Administration approved cessation tools. However, they argue ditching cigarettes to exclusively, exclusively vape is preferable to continuing to smoke combustible products. This is the American Cancer Society saying this. It goes on to say the group also remains worried about the presence of nicotine in vapor products, warning nicotine dependence could lead to the use of tobacco. And after all of this, after all of this science, pardon me, following the evidence, changing our minds, they still wrap it up by saying that nicotine could lead to the use of tobacco, which it absolutely has never, ever, ever in any study ever been shown to do. American Cancer Society, please practice what you preach, 
follow the evidence and let the scientific evidence change your minds. Still, Wade argues that the group's evolving position on vaping is encouraging news for the overall notion that we can have informed science-based debates over public health issues. Yes, I, I still absolutely agree with that. And finally, it wraps it up by saying millions of former smokers in the U.S. are already embracing the positive science on vaping and using the harm reduction tool to quit combustible cigarettes. Yes, that's millions with an M. I am one of millions of people in the United States that have switched from, I mean, cigarettes, just the worst shit you can possibly put in your body to vaping, which is not, not, not the worst shit you can possibly put into your body. Anyway, I, I just found that great. That article is wonderful. It was very refreshing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a link down in the description to this article that Amy sent over to me. So huge thank you to Amy for this article. I'm going to link to it down below. And I, I don't care. It's running long. There is something I really quickly wanted to talk about regarding Italy. So there was a vape event, a vaping expo in Italy. And the big article here, and this comes from Vape News Magazine, which I, I love this publication. I, I do a monthly column, Ask Grim Green, in this particular publication. But the big headline on it says, Italian authorities raid a vaping expo and seize products. And this is a, this is a very short digestible article. And again, I'm going to link to it down in the description, but I'd like to read some of it, if I may. Sky Vape reported yesterday, March 10th, 2018, agents from, uh, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this because it's in Italian. Guardia di Finzana. Okay, I'm not going to lie. That kind of sounds like a Harry Potter spell. Anyway, these agents came in and conducted a full-scale raid of the Savor Vapor Expo, a major vaping convention trade show held in northern Italy. They seized all the products and shut the expo down completely. According to emerging reports, uh, the agents conducted a pre-opening inspection and subsequently seized all e-liquids from all participants, even going so far as to tail those present in order to determine whether they po possessed contraband materials. And keep in mind, Italy just did that big three-year study showing that there was no adverse health effects from vaping, okay? They did that study, and now they are seizing, literally going into a giant vaping expo, shutting it down, and seizing all of the contraband e-liquids. These actions appear to stem from Italy's loss of revenue ge generated through punitive taxation and restrictive and expensive licensing requirements. Essentially, all distribution of vapor products is prohibited in Italy except by businesses which apply for and pay for a license much as a tobacconist license in the country. Sorry, much as a tobacconist must be licensed in the country as reported by Vape Ranks. This has, for all practical purposes, created a state monopoly on vapor products. Zero nicotine e-liquids are not exempt from these requirements. These measures are likely due to a reported $200 million loss over two years because of vaping products. So essentially, the Italian government has lost $200 million because of vapor products and not being paying taxes on those vapor products and not being licensed tobacconists, which I don't know how much it costs to get the tobacconist license in Italy. I'm assuming because so few people have done it that it is possibly a long and arduous and expensive process. But again, I don't know. It, it could be very easy. So apparently the following day, the expo was allowed to resume and open, but with no liquids available. They say only flavorings, which I'm not quite sure what that means. I think that means zero nicotine stuff, only flavorings and hardware were allowed to be sold at this Italian vape event. And the, and the vibe that I get from this is maybe that the, the tobacconist license is just either really very expensive and like a very long, complicated process to go through, or on the flip side of this, maybe these Italian agents are actually just enforcing the law that everyone at the event was well aware of and maybe decided not to do. It's hard to say that everybody at the event that had their liquids seized is an innocent person in this. They could have been well aware of the laws in Italy. They could have been well aware of these licenses that they needed and simply decided to not do it, to not pursue those licenses 
licenses and felt like maybe they could skim under the under the radar. Like it's so far under the radar that the Italian agents, you know, the Italian government's not really going to give them much of a fuss. And, and again, that is that is that is not based in fact at all. That is pure speculation. And the only reason I make that pure speculation is if I was invited to an Italian vape show and, you know, as a liquid company, if my liquid company was invited to an Italian vape show, I'd go, yeah, cool. That sounds great. You know, um, let, let's do this. Let's definitely do this. And it might be one of those things where you might not even look into what is necessary to sell your liquids in Italy, you know, having these licenses, having these restrictions. So I just thought that was a, a very little interesting piece of news. This is the first time that I believe, uh, with the with the exception of New Jersey, there was an event in New Jersey a number of years ago that was um, not, it wasn't shut down and nothing was confiscated as far as contraband goes, um, but officials from, from the state of New Jersey showed up and said, you guys know you can't vape in here, right? So this whole vape event event was vape free. You are not allowed to vape inside, even though I heard some conflicting stories like, oh, well, no, they allowed it later. And some people saying, no, they, they didn't allow vaping at all. And then there were other people who were vaping in spite of not being allowed to vape inside this vape convention. That happened in the United States. And apparently Italy uh, is very much against vaping unless unless, and that's a big unless, unless you are a licensed tobacconist, which again, I don't know how much that costs. I don't know what the process is like. I feel like there might have been some miscommunication here. Maybe the vendors didn't know what was expected of them, or maybe they did know and decided not to go through with it anyway. Anyway, I, I just found that... Uh, I just found that interesting. This is the first time I've heard of a vape show, like a big vape expo getting raided and, and having liquids confiscated and stuff like that. It kind of takes it into a little bit scarier, uh, a little bit more real, I guess, uh, of a situation. If something like that had happened at ECC, could you imagine, you know, big doors, the, the big loading doors flying open in the ECC and all these agents pouring in and confiscating uh, vendors' e-liquid and just being around in that situation, it would, it would, I mean, it would genuinely, it would genuinely kind of freak me out, I think, if I was in that situation. And that's the reality of, of what just happened in, uh, in Italy. So anyway, that's where I'm going to leave the news for this week because I know it's going long, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some links down in the description to uh, not just what I talk about in the news, but what I talk about throughout the rest of the vlog. But if you want to read these news articles, uh, share them around, spread them around, especially 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 the one with the American Cancer Society and their whole change and science-based evidence that right now is kind of my my favorite article that I want to get as popular as possible. Anyway, that's what I got for news. Let's go ahead and look at my vlog schedule, see what's up right now. Oh, we're supposed to be doing beer. Okay, so we're not going to be able to do beer this week. We're going to skip beer. So what we're going to do right now is jump straight into the small amount of vape mail that I have. Okay, cool. So not a whole bunch of vape mail. Certainly not the same amount of vape mail I had last week. This is four much, much smaller packages. Although I was expecting some stuff today. I'm going to go check my front door and see if there's any DHL out there. Uh, well, there is none. There is no DHL out there right now. So this is, the, this is what we're going to open. We're going to open these four packages. And I have a feeling this isn't even... Oh, these are... Oh, okay. That's fine. That's no big deal. Um, there was some miscommunication there between Cato and myself, and, and they sent me some extra pods. So now, now I have some Cato pods. Cool. Not, not really important. Didn't really need to be <laughs> in the vape mail segment, but it's all good. Got something from Digiflavor here. And out of these four packages, I would still like to try to find something to set up and vape in the vlog. Oh, it could be this. This is the Digiflavor Themis RTA. The Themis? Is anybody hip to the Themis here? I've not heard of the Themis RTA from Digiflavor. I generally like a lot of the stuff that Digiflavor does. Oh, 
That is a monster. Oh my good lord, that is a monster of an RTA. Top airflow, which explains the girthiness of it. Whenever you have top airflow in an RTA, it always makes the RTA just worlds bigger. Oh, well that's an interesting fill system right there. It's kind of just one turn, and then it, uh, it locks back into place with one turn. Oh, that's nice. Okay, this is interesting. I like investigating. Oh yeah. Oh, that's crazy weird, dude. That is crazy weird. Uh, I have a feeling this is gonna be one of those atomizers that is just a bitch to clean. This is gonna be one of those tanks that is just a bitch to clean. So the AFC comes off, uh, it's just held on via O-rings, and the bottom comes off and it screws in, and then you slide your deck out, and you got this really weird deck. Here, take a look at it. This is the deck here on the inside. You can kind of see it's got these uh, airflow sort of fins or something on there. It's a postless design. This is where your wicks go. Then there's holes on the bottom so your juice can get up to your wicks. And this is just a thing that slides in and out of the bottom um, that you, you build on. It's got a 510. It's got a uh, very nice protruding 510 on the bottom. So you could screw this to a mod to build it. And then once you get it built and glowing and wicked, then you put it inside the tank. Fast Fascinating. Just fascinating. And I wanted to show you this too. The tank, uh, this is as far apart as I can take it. No, hang on. I can do this. I can take the AFC off and that's as far apart as I can take it. There's a lot of moving metal parts in there and it's cut out right there. It's got T's that are cut out right there. You can see the tank on the inside. I don't know. This looks like a bitch to clean. I, I'd like to be able to take it completely apart and clean it and dry it off for, you know, building and changing juices and stuff like that. This one looks like that's as far apart as it comes. I don't know. Uh, obviously, I just opened it and I need to spend some more time with it, but this could be something we build in the vlog this week. The Themis RTA. Interesting. Interesting. Interesting to say the least. I think what happens here is your airflow is coming in and down and then it's going to go in through these holes. I think those holes are where your air is going to come in because it's coming in and down. There is a particular way you kind of have to line this back up to get it in here. Kind of snaps into place, I guess. Got to get that to seat properly in there. Okay. Interesting. Well, just because it's here on a light vape mail day, we might be taking a look at the Themis from Geek today, which, you know, building RTAs on the fly, that's, you know, basically my favorite thing to do, right? Oh no, it's my least favorite thing to do. Ugh. Wow, but the airflow is very nice, smooth. That is a smooth, swooshy airflow. And I'm guessing the glass comes off of here because it does have a replacement, you know, like a spare glass in there. Anyway, Geek Vape. Themis. And I got uh, three spares, which means ba -ba -da -ba, $2 sales. Um, I still have to put together a $2 sale for my patrons. If any of the cool kids club are watching this vlog, yes, the $2 sale boxes are going to be happening uh, this week, I believe, over on Patreon. And I might just include a Digiflavor Themis RTA in there as well. Got something new from Hellvape, which uh, I'm kind of excited about. Hellvape's, uh, Hellvape's pretty cool. Pretty, they, they produce some pretty cool stuff. They can be a little bit hit and miss, but I think for the most part, I, li I like the stuff that the Hell Vape does. I like that dead rabbit real good. Oh, this is Ambitions. Oh, okay, cool. This is an RDA. Ooh, maybe I want to build this. Now, I, I don't know how to pronounce this. Is that a Q-A-E-O-U-I-T-S? The Aotus? Or is it the Aquiotus? Aquiotus? Ambitions. Yeah, help me out here, bro. <laughs> Ambitions Vapor Aquio Aqu Aquitias. Okay, come on. I don't know how to pronounce that. I need some help here. And mostly I can't tell if that's an O or a Q right there because of the font choice. Okay, definitely want the stainless steel version of this. Ugh. Huh. It's very, very interesting. It's kind of got a knurled uh, top, tip top part, which doesn't affect the airflow or AFC in any way, which I actually really like. Looks to be 810 compatible. This one came with a green little drip tip on there. I'm gonna take a look at this deck. Oh, I see what he did. I see what he did. That's actually pretty clever. That's, that's, uh, 
That's a pretty clever move there, Ambition Vapors. So here's the deck right here. Looks to be a, uh, I don't want to say postless design, but it, because there are posts. Technically, there are raised posts on the deck, but you drop your coils in from the top, like a few atomizers that I know about do that as well. It looks to have a sort of a peak squonk situation in the middle where the squonk, where your liquid's gonna come out the sides rather than coming straight out the top. And then there's those notches, those notches in the side that kind of help secure it to your top cap. I really like that. And then what he did is you can do bottom or top airflow. So you can pop the top cap on like this and have the airflow coming at you from the bottom, sort of bottom angled up. And then you can take this and flip it around and the design, the Celtic design on there that I'm not, you know, super in love with, but it doesn't affect the design. You can run it right side up or upside down and you can plug it on this way and have a very, uh, you know, I don't want to say dead rabbity, but kind of like a, a dead rabbity upward angled down slot right there. Interesting. I'm I'm fascinated by this and the two different kinds of airflow. In fact, I think if I'm going to build something, I might build this instead of that RTA. That is interesting. I mean that that is a that that's an interesting design. I, I really like that idea of being able to flip your top cap around and get bottom in airflow or get like top in angled downflow or bottom in angled downflow, airflow. Why can't I speak right now? Downflow, it's, that's like downflow, okay. But I really like the idea of being able to flip your top cap around and have bottom airflow or top airflow, see how that changes the vaping experience. And I mean, that can change the vaping experience based on how you have your coils. If there's a certain coil, uh, you know, size or diameter or how you position them in there, you go, oh, these are definitely coils that need bottom airflow. You can change your coils around. Maybe, I don't know, have coils that really cater towards more of a, a top in airflow or a bottom in airflow. I like the idea of being to being able to fiddle around and, and really tweak with your vape. This is great. This is very cool so far. Really interested to see how this vapes. Let's try out the, let's just test out the airflow, how it feels. Nice. Uh, I would like to be able to close it off just a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, that's not an option with this, which is which is fine. I I don't non look an atomizer that doesn't have an AFC that that generally doesn't bother me because the person ambitions vapor who I I have talked to very sporadically in email and I have not really ever met in person or spent any time with. I'm assuming that like a lot of other people who design RDAs, he does this RDA to fit the way that he likes to vape. So this airflow is probably his like perfect, just perfect tits airflow. So I'm really interested to try it. I always like seeing what, uh, how other people like to vape. It's big. I mean, this is definitely, definitely a cloud chasey RDA. I'm expecting to get some pretty damn good flavor out of this as well, just because of where the coils are set, where the airflow is, and that conical sort of reduced chamber on the inside. Could be very cool. Okay, right now, this is leading the pack as to what I'm going to vape in this week's vlog, because I'm just, uh, I'm really interested in it. And they sent two, which means that this one, this is the black one, this is the rainbowy one. Ooh, which one is this? Which one's going in the $2 sales? Rainbow, oh, dodged a bullet there. Someone else is gonna get the rainbow one. W which again, is completely fine. I generally don't like the way rainbowy colored stuff looks, um, but a lot of people do. So hell, that's cool. Got something cool to vape on. And I think this is from iJoy. Yeah, it definitely is. It definitely is. It definitely is. They always send a, you know, a, a sash's worth of bubble wrap packing material, I should say. Okay, this is the iStick Pico Baby. It actually says that, iStick Pico Baby. Okay, well this is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be one of those internal tank type of situation. iStick Pico Baby. Oh, I opened the purple one, but it's just kind of this tiny little, uh, Tiny little guy right here. It has a, I, I read that it has a locking, like a locking feature on the switch. Oh yeah. It's got a magnetic sort of 510 in there. So you just drop this in and it stays in magnetically. This looks like a slightly bigger version of that E-Leaf Basal tank. It's got the same exact airflow. You can close the airflow down to one tiny little really 
just a pinhole mouth to lung. I have a feeling this is a full on mouth to lung uh, tank in here. It's It looks like a bigger version of that Basal. It's got that same tiny little coil head on the inside. This is called the GS Baby. I, I blame, I, I blame smoke. I blame smoke tech or smock or however the fuck you want to say it. We used to say smoke tech back in the day because they used to be called smoke tech when they were, remember when, remember when smoke tech was cranking out all those really insanely uns safe mech mods. No, nobody remembers that. Back in the day they used to do that. We used to call them smoke tech and I just wanted to say I'm blaming smoke tech for the use of baby in vaping. Baby beast. Pico baby. I'm going to release the the, uh, the recoil baby. Or it has a standard 510 connection on the bottom and you just screw this little thingy on and you pop it in here and then and then you're cool. I don't know how to, I'm going to need instructions. I can't believe I'm going to need instructions for this. There's two Separate instruction manuals, one for the tank and one for the for the mod. Why not? Why not just put this all together, Elif? I mean, I'm not going to tell you how to run your business, but good lord! All right, that's how that works. Let's look at the mod. Oh, but there's a white indicator light. Oh, okay, so it really is a five on five off. Let's try this again. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Do I need to unscrew this more? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, there is a white, there's a tiny little white light in there. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, cool. So you unscrew this all the way and it kind of becomes a clicky little uh, like detonator style button. And then you do this like it's a mechanical mod and then that keeps you from being able to fire it. That's actually kind of cool. Having a mechanical stop on your button is something I'm I'm a pretty big fan of, especially in mechanical mods. I've rarely ever, if ever, seen it used in any sort of like a circuitry based, uh, you know, regulated mod like this. I can't imagine that the battery life is going to be anything but cruddy on this, but you know what? I have no way of telling. Well, anyway, there you go. I hope I didn't burn out the coils or anything like that. So it's got a five on, a five off, and a mechanical safety on the switch. So that's a lot of uh, multiple ways to either fire or not fire your device. Well, cool. Um, literally, that's it. That's all I have for vape mail today. So, oh, what are we gonna do? I might have to put this up to Instagram. Oh man, I might have to put this up to Instagram. You know what? No, I'm not gonna do a poll. I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm making a call. I'm gonna build this. We're gonna build this and we're gonna vape this and that's, I'm gonna clean up. I'm gonna build this and we're gonna be right back. Equitas, Equitas. I'm gonna go ahead and call it the Equitas. That's the closest, that's the closest I think I'm gonna get to the to the actual pronunciation of this atomizer. And I just wanna go on record right now and say, most of what I said when I was unboxing the atomizer actually is, is not true at all. At least as far as no AFC is concerned, there is an AFC on here and I didn't see it until I kind of put it all together, but there's little tabs, little tabs I showed you on the deck, those coincide with little tabs on the inside, and that is what adjusts your airflow. Those aren't there to help you get it off of the atomizer, although they do help do that. Those actually keep the AFC in place, and then, well, I'll show you in a second. I'm gonna spin the barrel on here. Once you get those locked in, you find the right spot, Boom, they're locked in. And now when you twist the barrel, the AFC will open and close like this. Close, then if you go too far, you can boop, you can take your whole atomizer off, but those little tabs are for the AFC. They're for the AFC. Anyway, I am just going to try this full open first. I just put some uh, very simple fused Claptons on there. These are some Fiends fused Claptons. Um, they were reported to come out to, reported. They are listed, listed? It's it's documented here, 0.16 to 0.18. So I saw that and I went, cool, that's gonna be perfect for a regulated mod. I put it on my original Squid Industries double barrel uh, mod, uh, no real reason, just cause I wanted to, cause I haven't used this in a while. And let me just say that the building process on this pretty simple. It's just a drop your coils in and tighten them down. You have to pre-clip your leads. So you kind of have to measure. I measured and clipped and then measured and then clipped. I had to go through two clipping processes to get my coils kind of where I wanted them, got them glowing evenly. And this RDA is a breeze to wick. It is 
incredibly simple to wick. All I did was I clipped my wicks right even with the edge of the deck. I just took my scissors, put it up against the edge of the deck, clipped them, up against the edge of the deck, clipped them, and that clipped them to the perfect length where I just had to press them down, just boop, boop, right into place and, and then they stay down and that's great. Um, I don't have the squonk pin in this because I'm not running it on a squonker. I'm running it on a dual regulated, you know, 18650 mod. And I, I had been really intensely craving bro trip again recently. It's a juice I used to vape a ton of. And then, you know, as more juices come in and other ones leave and, you, you know, you kind of rotate through some juices, right? Well, I was craving bro trip. Thankfully, it's my own juice. So I know where to get a supply of it, but I've been craving bro trips, so I'm just gonna throw these on these coils real fast. I get the feeling that this is very much a blayer juice through the middle kind of atomizer. Your coils, a lot like uh, the Dead Rabbit, a lot like the Phobia, a lot like that Kali RDA, your coils are just dead center, almost, almost touching, just right, right in the center of the RDA. And when you drip through the tip, it's just bleh, just boom, right onto your coils. Let me finish wetting these wicks. Stop talking, Nick, and, and do your job. That's, that's how I motivate myself. I just, I just shame myself. <laughs> All right, these wicks are wet. This came out to a 0.16. Thank you, fiends, right on the nose, 0.16. And 0.16 is kind of that, that really good area of resistance that I like where I can run it on something regulated at a fairly high wattage or I can run it on like a single 18650 tube mech and still get you know plenty plenty of power plenty of performance let's try 88 watts Oh yeah, look at that, the vapors are happening. And just because of the way I built my coils on here, I really wanna try the top cap with the airflow at the top. The higher up, more, you know, I hate to make this comparison, more dead rabbit style. Higher up, angled down, big slots. I have a feeling the airflow on this is gonna feel very similar to the dead rabbit, and I have a feeling that the flavor on it is gonna be pretty stellar, at least that's what I'm expecting. So, cheers, freshly juiced, First toot, here we go. Great, fuck that's a good vape. Very open, swooshy airflow. This is, this is in its full open configuration is very much like a cloud chasey atomizer. And this can really handle some high wattage. I mean, this is 90 watts on a 0.16. That's, I mean, that's 3.8 volts. That's basically like a, you know, a, a freshly charged single 18650 battery on like a mech mod. So I'm not like overloading it with voltage, but it's holding up really well. I'm gonna try to adjust this AFC I don't know, just down, just a little bit, just, I don't know, like a quarter of the way just to see how it feels. I've been experimenting with airflow a lot recently, going back and forth between real open, wide open airflow, and then maybe a little bit closed down, maybe a little bit more restricted of an airflow. So let's give that a shot. This bro trip tastes great in this atomizer. Holy crap. I, I love it. I, I'm in love. I'm in love with this whole little setup right here. This is great. And for anyone curious, any of the DHD fanboys out there, which, I mean, come on, you, you, we should be all be DHD fanboys, right? Nub tips fit in here just like they were made for it. And I picked this black and like fiery one. It's very cool. 90 watts, 0.16, turn the airflow down just a little bit. I'm getting the most dense, saturated feeling vape from this atomizer. I, I really like this vape. I am, I am, I am, I am, this is winning me over real quick. But let's just for the sake of science, let's do the whole flip the barrel upside down and see how it works with that bottom in airflow. And because of the way that the deck is positioned, and, and I find it very interesting that this is, they say it's a, a postless design, but there's clearly posts on it. You can't say something is postless if there are actual posts in this. The Dead Rabbit is not a postless design. This is not a postless design, okay? There are posts in it. You just happen to be putting your leads in the top rather than in through the side. Those in the deck, those things are still called posts. So 
I don't know. I, I mean, I realize that's splitting hairs, but I don't really feel like you could call this a postless design. Whatever it is, top loading design, it works well because like I said, your coils are right there, really conducive to bluing your juice. I'm gonna try to blend my juice with the airflow at the bottom. Hopefully I don't get any leaking. I shouldn't, I don't generally go crazy. Looks good. Looks to be sort of leak free right there. All right, let's try this with the airflow at the bottom now. Uh, yeah, a very, very similar experience. First toot out of the gate, don't notice, uh, don't really notice anything. Don't notice a difference in flavor. I don't notice a difference in the airflow, how it feels. It doesn't feel turbulent, still feels fairly on the smooth side of things. Let me turn it down just a little bit, see how that goes. I think I actually like the airflow on the top. I'm gonna flip this around and put that airflow back on the top because I think that's where I like it more. And I do think it's pretty innovative. I mean, that's pretty unique to have a barrel that you can flip upside down. I personally have not seen that before in an RDA, having a barrel that you can swap the airflow angles just from flipping the flipping the barrel around. I think that's cool. I gotta give it up, Ambition's Vapor. That's a That's a pretty innovative little design right there. Yeah, definitely top. Definitely top. I, I, I feel like the flavor is actually better from the top. And that could be just how I have my coils positioned. It could be a lot of things. But for right now, the top airflow is really very doing it for me. Dang. All right. Well, I don't want to spend the whole vlog here just vaping on this, but I'm enjoying it so much. I'm just going to take a second. Okay, in fact, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna stop vaping on this right now because I'm gonna use this atomizer for my retro vape. I've got it right here. I'm gonna use this atomizer on it and I'm, and I'm, and I'm pretty excited about it. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna jump right into retro vaping. So I've been on a mech kick lately. I'm trying to air out some of the vapor in this room, so don't worry about it. I've been on a mech kick lately. So I went through and I was trying to find some old mech mods and I, and I don't know where I put my box of old mech mods. I have a box, it's a big box that's literally labeled tube mech mods and I really wanna get in there and try out some of these old mech mods. But what I found readily available in a completely different box is this little guy right here. You wanna see this? This is just part of it. Does anybody recognize that? Gonna be able to see what that is. Any guesses before you go read the description? Here, let me put this other part on here. What's that? What's that shaping up to be? Looks like a mech mod to me. This is the Panzer. This is an authentic Panzer from MCV. They were out of the Philippines. I want to say this came out in 20, ugh, late 2012, uh, early 2013, I think is when the mechs were really hitting big. This one had a kind of annoying feature adjusting for the battery rattle, the, the 510 pin in it. This was pre-hybrids. This was a top cap with a 510 pin in it. You had this little screw on the bottom that you had to adjust in and out to take up for battery rattle, which was kind of an annoying thing. I'm glad we got rid of that in mech mods. I'm really excited to use this. I'm going to put the switch on. I'm going to put a battery in. Here's the switch right here. And the switch is nice and soft spring based switch on the inside. At least I believe it's a spring based switch. It feels like a spring that doesn't feel magnetic. I believe that to be a spring based switch on the inside, but it was nice and smooth and squishy. And it actually had a reverse threaded uh, locking ring on it as well. So you could go like this, screw it all the way down and have it and then continue turning it. And that was your little locking ring right there to protect it from, you know, firing, accidental misfires and the like. Get all this threading nice and tight. Let's put the atomizer on here, the Aquitas atomizer. So I'm gonna have to do that uh, adjustment, battery rattle adjustment thing. Can you hear that battery rattling around in there? It's because it's not adjusted properly. Old mech mods used to have to do this and it was kind of a pain in the ass. I'm gonna unscrew it about that far. Let's see how it goes. Nope, still bat still rattling around in there. Still rattling around, Panzer. All right, so let's try five threads out. Okay, okay, there we go. No battery rattle, nice and snug. And I did also notice when I was unscrewing this particular atomizer, this Aquitas atomizer, which I, I, I have a feeling I'm not saying that right. Ambitions Vapor, please go easy on me for not 
pronouncing the name of your atomizer correctly. When I was unscrewing this atomizer from that uh, double barrel mod, the little tabs are really, really just for the AFC. It doesn't really help you unscrew it from the atomizer. It's really just for adjusting the AFC, which is still very cool, but I was like, oh, the tabs will help me. So I'm just sitting here like unscrewing it and unscrewing it and the AFC is just spinning around like crazy. And I'm like, okay, so it's not for helping take it off. It helps a little bit, but I, maybe I had it cranked down on there too far. Anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about this Panzer. I used to really like this Panzer. This Panzer came out when it was at the, you know, at my, at my peak, I guess, of like mech mods and mech mod loving. I, I was really into the Nemesis mech mod back in the day. That's a mech mod that I really need to grab out as that Nemesis again. But the Panzer was great. This came in stainless steel, brass, and copper. This is the stainless steel version. Like I said, it was constructed in the Philippines and these had a really high asking price. I think these particular mech mods, not necessarily for the stainless steel version, but I think for the copper and brass versions, it was, I mean, well over 250 bucks. I mean, these were expensive, expensive mech mods. These were, these were the first round of like really high end stuff in the vape world. But I got this battery in here, no more battery rattle, got this topped with the Aquitas atomizer, loaded up with bro trip. Let's just, uh, Okay, it's firing. Let's give it a shot here. Rad, rad. It still works. Rad, shit. I might leave this on here, man. It's a little bit uh, cooler of a vape, 0.16 on here. It's a little bit cooler of a vape than it was on the regulated. This battery is not fully charged. I'm not getting that full four volts or that full 3.8 volts. feels a little bit weaker than that, but I'm enjoying it. I'm actually gonna turn down the airflow because I realized I kind of like the airflow turned down a little bit on this. Cool. Cool. That's cool. That is it. That that's a great vape right there. That's a great vape. And now I have to put Bro Trip in a glass dripper bottle. Hits. Uh, it's hitting nice and hard. These contacts remained. Oh, look at that. What happened there? Top of this. Boop. These contacts remained very clean. It was in a plastic bag inside of a box, so maybe that helped keep the, the oxygen away from like corroding the contacts. But I, I looked through all the contacts. They all looked nice and clean. The stainless steel version wasn't... Uh, stainless steel versions in general, I feel like, aren't as conductive as like a copper mod or a brass tube mod or aluminum even, I believe, is more conductive than stainless steel, which is why now, like, you know, the dreamer mech i really like the idea of a coated of a coated copper mod or a coated you know brass mod it's because i don't like brass and copper exposed brass and copper like as much as i love this broadside as much as i love this culverin as much as i love this setup yeah it smells like a roll of pennies it makes my hands stink it picks up the stink it's a very it's just brass is just stinky and I don't like the way it smells. Yeah, I really don't like the way it smells. So in the past, I would generally opt for stainless steel mechs, even though they didn't quite hit as hard as some other mechs. I, I much preferred Oh, that beautiful stainless steel, non-scented mech mod. But yeah, the Panzer. Let's, uh, I'm not sure what else to say about it. I used to really like this mech back in the day. Um, it's convertible into two pieces. So the whole bottom comes off of this like this. And then you could take your switch and you could plug your switch onto here and have a smaller mech mod. Now, this is not even 18650 size. This is like 18350 sized. The chamber on the inside for the battery is a very, very small battery. You can see how far out an 18650 sticks. Doesn't quite close there. Need that extra middle segment for the 18650 size. All the threads on this was were all the threads on this were great, smooth, glidey. I love the button. Oh, and now I have to readjust for battery rattle because I messed with it, didn't I? And I don't know, these could be one for one threads. Sometimes these pins had one for one threads, meaning the threads on the pin matched the threads, the outer threads of the mech mod so you could adjust it out and it would adjust itself back in with the turning of the top. And that is maybe not the case in this situation. Wow, why am I getting so much battery rattle now? It wasn't, it honestly wasn't a perfect system. A lot of these, oh, there it goes. There's the little tightness that I'm looking for right there. A lot of the early mech mods 
we're kind of a little bit of a bitch to adjust. I'm not sure if anybody remembers uh, Emit Vapor, but they made two mech mods. One of them was called the Shotgun. One of them was called something else. Those are the mech mods that I really need to dig out. Those were some of my favorites. And the reason that they were some of my favorites is they had auto adjusting features. They had things like the spring loaded in the bottom and the spring loaded in the top. So all you had to do was put a battery in, put an atomizer on, and you didn't ever have to adjust for that battery rattle like a lot of the original, like I want to say first wave of like mech mods. A lot of the first wave of mech mods came out of the Philippines and that's just the way that they designed it was with that little pin in there. Anyway, let me have another vape. I'm going to wrap this retro vaping up. Look at that. Panzer. That's hitting good. Hitting good, hitting real good. So yeah, let me know if you guys did. You, did anybody? Did any of my subscribers ever have a Panzer Mech mod? And if you can verify the dates around that, that would be real helpful because I want to think that this came out in 2012. I want to say this came out towards the end of 2012, maybe even towards the beginning of 2013. But I could be real wrong on that. I would genuinely like to know. Anybody tried a Panzer? Anybody still vape a Panzer mech mod? That would be really interesting, right? Anyway, this is great. I'm leaving this set up. I really like it. Didn't think I would really ever put the Panzer back in my regular rotation, but I, I like this combo. It's a little bit tall. It's a little bit taller than, say, the broadside and in, in hybrid mode. It's just, a, you know, a, what is that, a half an inch taller? But on a mech mod, the, the taller it is, the more you notice it. It starts feeling more like a baton. Anyway, very cool. All right, Panzer retro vaping. Successful. It's nice to have... <laughs> It's nice to have a successful retro vaping after last week. After last week and the broken Kanger shit, it feels nice to just get out of retro vaping and have it work and be, you know, damn near just as impressive as it was back in the day. But anyway, that's going to wrap up retro vaping. So what I'm going to do real quick right now. Yeah, getting to know Grim Green. Okay, so here we go. Getting to know Grim Green. This is a little bit of an intrusive question, um, but since we're getting married, we should probably talk about it. Taylor. Taylor wrote in, wrote me an email and said, Hey, Nick, uh, I've got a getting to know Grim Green question, which may be a bit intrusive. I was wondering how you met Casey Pickle. Just heard that you two were getting married. Also, I was watching one of your old videos and heard about the origins of the Grim Army and heard her name mentioned in a contest you entered. I believe it was about a logo for a new mod. I was just curious. Thanks, Taylor. All the best. So yeah, um, absolutely. So uh, Casey Pickle, the, 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 the Cool Kids Club, the patrons are very familiar with Casey Pickle. She jumps on uh, the live stream with me from time to time and, and uh, she likes to goof off with the patrons. So I met, I first met Casey Pickle in 2010. Uh, she was working for a vape company at the time called Pure Smoker. And at that time, back in 2010, kind of 2010, 2011, uh, Pure Smoker was, was big. They were one of the biggest vendors in the United States, and they were one of the only vendors in the United States custom fabricating their own mods. They did the Prodigy, the Prodigy V2, they did the Protege, they did a couple, they did the Prodigy V3, which was a which was a pretty dope mech mod. It would it would not make a good retro vaping just because of the way that it was styled. This is years before I mean years and years before anyone had thought of something like an RDA to go on top. So this was a mechanical mod that we were using with like cardo tanks or like those little disposable Joytech 510 atomizers. Anyway, she worked for Pure Smoker. She did customer service and shipped orders for Pure Smoker. And that's how I met her because I reviewed stuff for Pure Smoker. So when my shit would break, I would send it to her and she would be the one to fix it. And she would send me stuff to review. And she would sometimes, you know, I'm sure it's, this is all water under the bridge now. And she would sometimes, you know, sneak me some, maybe some extra couple bottles of juice in there. I really liked the cash cap that they sold. I really liked their blueberry and I really liked their cash tab, their tobacco they sold, which, you know, all of this juice was, it was China juice that had been uh, relabeled and rebranded. This was pre USA made e-liquid even. This is when all of our juice was coming from China. So she would occasionally like slip me some extra 
stuff, this, that, and the other. And that's when I met her for the first time was in, in 2010. Casey was way, way, way back in 2010. And it was, you know, one of those like, yeah, we're, we're friends in the vape community. And this is something that, that I go through now with people in the vape community. People come kind of in and out of your life, right? When, when I'm a YouTuber and so I meet uh, so many people, uh, so many so many vapors, so many people that run businesses, so many other YouTubers that people just kind of pass in and out of your out of your life. She is actually partly responsible for the idea of the Grim Army, of the Grim Army logo, because Pure Smoker was having a contest and they needed a new logo to engrave on the the Pure Smoker Prodigy V2, I believe it was, the Prodigy V2, they needed a new logo for. And so they put this contest up on ECF, like, you know, oh, figure out, you know, help design the new Pure Smoker V2, Prodigy V2 logo. And so I was like, I could definitely do that. I designed up this whole logo and I, I had been talking to Casey at the time about it. And uh, she said, well, why don't you just get your, your Grim Army to go vote for you because it was like an open open voting thing and we were kind of joking around like oh yeah my army my big my legions of of subscribers my big grim army you know and being real tongue in cheek about it because back in the day I mean back at this time this was back in the days where I, I was not at uh even a hundred thousand subscribers I think I was teetering right around like the 35 to 40 thousand subscriber mark so really great audience of people but I mean certainly Certainly not an army of people. And so jokingly, in, in, in her response to saying that I had an army, I opened Photoshop and I made the original Grim Army logo, which is basically, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a version of the Kiss Army logo. And that's why it doesn't get used so much anymore, because I don't need Gene Simmons coming down here and knocking on my door and telling me to knock it off. But I'm a huge Kiss fan, and so I kind of just took the Grim, took the Kiss Army logo, changed it around a little bit, put Grim Army in there and like a, a similar looking lettering. And, and you know, this is something, and I'm not trying to defend the Grim Army logo, but this is something that the Kiss Army logo is kind of a thing that gets used by a lot of people. If you Google it, there are multiple skateboard companies. There's a band called the Melvins. They all kind of do their own variation. They have the Melvins Army. They have all these other different army type of things, right? And it's all based around the Kiss Army. So I made the Grim Army, and that is 100% uh, Casey Pickles' fault for even suggesting that way back in the day I had an army that could vote for me to uh, to win the the Prodigy V2 logo contest. But thanks to the Grim Army, I actually did end up winning that contest, and so they used my logo on their mod, and they sent me a mod, you know, as the prize was a mod. So I was like, cool. So I got the mod, I reviewed it. In fact, I think. My Pure Smoker Prodigy V2 review is still on YouTube. It's there. I'm going to try to track it down and I'll put a link to it down in the description of this video. But it is, I mean, this was, this was ages ago. Even just thinking about it feels like ages ago. Casey is one of those people that I, I was friends with and she really supported me really early on in, in, in vaping in in my YouTube. And now she kind of is very much that grounding element that I need in my life. She reminds me of when I first started this, why I first started doing this in the first place. Casey Pickle really does help keep me in check and, and keep me on the path that I that I should be on. Because, you know, she, she reminds me of, of the old days. She reminds me of uh, the times when I first started doing this, like I said. So it really, she really helps keep me uh, centered and, and really very, very level-headed. So yes, that's, that's, that's about what we're gonna go into with that, Taylor. Hope that answers your question, but uh, yeah, forever ago. Forever ago, that's when I met Casey Pickle. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that was, I guess that was a little bit intrusive, but I, I think, I mean, I think I handled it pretty well. But if anybody else has any other, you know, getting to know Grim Green questions, just random questions, hopefully not too intrusive, but any other random questions, feel free to send them on over to Nick at GrimGreen.com. Just mark it, you know, getting to know Grim Green. I'm going to keep putting this segment back into the vlog. It got kind of taken out of the vlog for a little while, but I actually really like it and I'd like to throw it back into the vlog. And while we're on the subject of getting to know Grim Green, Star Wars Episode Eight is now out for home 
viewing. I pre-ordered it as soon as I could. And then last night, we, we, me and Casey Pickle went out with some of our friends to go get beers. And I got a notification on my phone as we were walking back home that said, your pre-order of Star Wars Episode Eight is now available. And I went, oh my God, we have to watch Star Wars Episode Eight tonight. And it was like, look, it was late. It was 9.30, okay? I'm an old man. I like to go to bed early. 9.30 is too late for me to really sit and, and invest myself in Star Wars Episode Eight, so that's what's happening tonight, and I'm very excited about it. So there you go, Star Wars Episode Eight. Who bought it? Because I bought it. <laughs> anyway, getting too far off track. Thank you, uh, thank you, Taylor, for writing that in. And uh, like I said, anybody else has any getting to know Grim Green stuff, send it on over. I'd be more than happy to answer it in this here vlog. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to uh, continue this train, and we're going to jump right into some viewer mails. First viewer mail comes to us from Eric. <laughs> oh, Eric. Look, Eric, it's cool. Here we go. Uh, Eric right in and said, hey, Nick, I think I fucked up. I bought some questionable juice. I'm 100% against advertising for kids, but apparently I'm still a child. This absolutely looks like Candy Crush, but I had to. It's fucking delicious. I'd like to hear your feedback. Get, get, get some and have a not so random juice tasting with it. Please keep up, keep up the good work. P.S. I mean, it's sour worms. So, and he sent me a picture of uh, Eric. Yeah, he bought uh, he bought sour worms, Candy King, which uh, Candy King is notoriously, I mean, not my favorite vendor. I've gone back and forth with them and drip more on social media. I mean, more times than I can even care to talk about. And, and here's the thing. Here's here's where this is going to come down to. Eric, I feel like Eric was expecting a little bit of a... Uh, you know, ass whooping from me. I think he was a glutton for punishment. I think he wanted me to tell him that uh, he did fuck up. He shouldn't be buying that. He certainly shouldn't be posting it on social media, and he certainly should enjoy that. But that's not what I'm going to say, because I'm a freedom guy. And I think that if you are a of age adult in America, you should be able to buy whatever you want and put into your body whatever you want. So Eric, I'm not going to reprimand you for buying Candy King Sour Worms. It's probably a delicious juice. Hell, I might even like to try it someday. I still really dislike the Candy King, everything about it. I do, It's not the branding. Here's the thing. I don't mind the branding. If you look at that bottle that Eric sent in, the branding is not bad. It's just because the name of the liquid has candy in it. And I know that adults like flavors, but the, na the name candy, the term candy is literally just kind of for kids. We have an entire holiday that is for kids for them to get candy. That's all kids think about when they're young is candy. And this is from Jerry Seinfeld when he said, that's all kids think about is candy, candy, candy. How can I get more candy? How can I get more candy? So just having the name candy in the name of the e-liquid is what kind of bothers me. I don't necessarily find it offensive. It's not going to ruin my day that Candy King exists or that Eric, one of my very loyal subscribers, Eric, I see you in the comment section all the time in my videos. It's cool. I hope you vape it. I, I hope you enjoy it. Got another email here from Mike. Mike writes in and says, hey, Nick, Mike here. Hope you're having a great day, bro. Totally am. I love your content and I watch all of your videos. I would love to get your opinion on a few things. I'm planning on moving soon so I won't have a job for a short time. I vape a lot so it puts me in a bit of a pickle. My plan is to get a nice mouth to lung setup and give nicotine salt juice a go. I have either the Me One or the Me Pod in mind. The question being, would it be safe to use 35 milligram Nick Salt in the Me One? Also, what is your opinion on Nick Salts as well? Thank you for your time and all you do for the vaping community. P.S. When will the Grim Green Edition of the me pod be available bro it's available uh the, the grim green edition of the me pod the green grim green edition of the me pod um it's available all over the place we have it on recoilrda.com and uh they turned out they turned out awesome and that's not a sales pitch i'm not telling anybody to go buy one and mike i'm not telling you to go buy one but they are available you can absolutely use 35 milligram nick salt in the me one or the me pod i like both of those things and i have 
50 milligram stuff in my knee pod right now. It is this stuff, the Ryu Nick Salt. This is 50 milligram. It's a little 30 mil bottle. The tip on these little tiny little chubby gorilla 30 mil bottles are amazing for filling up tanks. This might be the only application that I truly love chubby gorillas for because it's got that it's got that pointy needle tip which is just great for filling up things like the Mi Pod, like the Mi One, like a lot of other pod systems out there. Um, I like the Mi One. I like the Mi Pod, of course, and you can definitely use 35 milligram salt nick in a Mi One if you really want to. Um, salt nicks don't always sit well with me. It's been getting a little bit better as of late, but generally I don't I don't find a lot of satisfaction in salt nicks. I generally much prefer a, like a traditional 50-50 PGVG 12 or 18 milligram freebase nicotine is what that's called. It's a suspended solution of, of freebase nicotine. The Nick salts hit me a little bit weird, but the upside of Nick salts is the absorption rate is much more efficient, meaning you'll feel satisfied quicker from salt nick. If you vape too much of it, you do run the possibility of of really, I mean, I don't want this to be like a scary warning thing, but you can get over nicked. Um, generally what happens is you'll get really dried out and you'll get a little bit of a headache. It used to happen to me when I was vaping really high nicotine, like 36 milligram stuff. When I first started vaping, it would give me headaches, but I liked vaping so much. I didn't want to stop and I didn't put two and two together until I realized, okay, well this, all this vaping of this 36 milligram juice is what's actually giving me a headache. I haven't vaped enough salt nick really like in one sitting to give me any sort of headache, but it does hit me weird. It doesn't hit me in my throat like I like. It kind of hits me more in my chestal area, but this is a me pod with uh, 50 milligram juice in it. It's nice. Feels nice, hits me a little bit weird, but it is very satisfying. So yeah, to answer your question, long drawn out, long drawn out answer, absolutely. 35 milligram salt nick in a Mi Pod or a Mi One, totally works. Totally works, totally works. Good luck on your quest, good luck with your move, and happy vaping. Got another email here from Big Luke. Big Luke writes in and says, Hey Nick, my name is Luke, hailing from the Midwest. I would send you a video for your new favorite thing in the vlogs, but I hate talking. I hate taking videos or pictures of myself. Well, there you go. You know, before I started doing YouTube, um, I was the same way. I hated talking to a camera. I hated taking video of myself. I hated taking pictures of myself. I was kind of very much the same way. So it's cool, Luke. It's totally cool. I get it. Um, I'm a longtime watcher of the channel and you actually influenced the purchase of my first vape ever, the Ego Twist, five long years ago. Holy crap. I've been watching ever since you reviewed that product and it's crazy to see how far technology has come since then. It absolutely is, man. That Ego Twist, I stand by everything I said in that video. That ego twist, at that time, it was a game changer. He says, anyway, I have two questions for you. Are there any flavors when they're in a juice that you just can't stand? For example, for me, if there's even a hint of banana in a juice, it just makes me gag. Two, have you ever tried Musha by Sugoi Vapor? You said you really love that sweet black tea by Poet, so I think you would really dig this stuff. 8vape.com has it for like $9 a 60 mil right now, unless they're out of stock by the time you read this, and I'd love to know your thoughts. Thanks for humoring my mindless rambling and waxing poetic about the past. I hope this email finds you in good spirits. You are the bomb. No, Big Luke, you're the bomb. No, I have not tried Musha by Sugoi Vapor, but if it's uh, if it's anything like the sweet black tea, I, chances are I'm probably going to be into it because I love, love, love the sweet black tea by Poet. Um, are there any flavors that when they're in a juice, you just can't stand? Like, for example, that's right, he doesn't like the banana. So, yes, there are a bunch of flavors that when in a juice, I generally can't stand. I have never, and this isn't a challenge to try to find one that I'm going to like, I have never ever in the history of vaping ever enjoyed any flavors that contain papaya. Melons as well, uh, they have to be done really correctly, which is why this week's random juice tasting is going to be so interesting. But melon flavors like honeydew or cantaloupe always taste bad. 
They, they just taste gross to me. Honeydew in particular tastes like the inside of a, like a Halloween mask, like the inside of a vinyl Halloween mask. I just can't stand it. And papaya, for some reason, every time I vape it, it tastes like sour farts. And I can't, I can't not taste that when I taste papaya. So yeah, there are certain flavors that, nope, I just can't stand. Anyway, Big Luke, thanks for writing in. Hope that answers your question. Got another email here from Edward. Edward writes in and says, Hey, just a quick question. How do you feel about people making DIY juice clones of your juice for personal consumption? Obviously, if they were selling it to undercut you, that would be a massive dick move. And then, uh, I don't know if I should say this, Eglitomy non carbidonium. Is that another Harry Potter spell? Are you trying to trick me? Is this like trying to trick Bjork into saying her name backwards so she disappears? Ed. Anyway, Ed, I can't pronounce the last little bit right there, um, which feels probably for the better. But uh, no, I mean, that that that, uh, that definitely does not bother me in any capacity. Um, it, it might be difficult, um, and I'm not saying that that my juices in particular, but a lot of juices are, are, are real complex. It's not just uh, like strawberry, banana, PGVG, and then you vape it. A lot of juices, and I know for sure a lot of our juices, are real complex. They contain, you know, nine, 10 different flavorings in there at varying, you know, percentages in this, that, and the other. But if someone wants to make a DIY juice clone of Yig, like you want to try to figure out Yig and you want to, you want to try to DIY it yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I I don't care. I don't see why that's a I don't really see why that's an issue at all. Yig sells, and if people want to DIY it, then that's cool for personal consumption. That's totally cool. I don't see a difference between that and trying to homebrew your own, you know, imperial stout or something like that, or trying to trying to brew your own uh, brown ale. Maybe you really like Newcastle brown ale, and you want to homebrew your own brown ale and have it be as close to Newcastle as possible. Newcastle can't go, well, stop homebrewing our particular type of beer. That's just not, that's just not a thing. So if anyone wants to DIY it, yeah, dude, DIY it. Don't sell it. I mean, don't sell it, but DIY it for personal consumption. Yeah, absolutely, Edward. I I got no issues with that. Happy DIYing. Last viewer mail here. This is coming from Victor Grizzly Vapor Oist, Oistman? Oistman. Oistman. There he is. Victor Oistman. How are you, bro? Anyway, he writes in and says, Hello, Nick. My, uh, you feel free to use my name in the vlog you'd like. Uh, oh, he's in Sweden. He says, Here in Sweden, we just started to work the TPD. I know that you I know that you over there in the USA, you don't work after that law, but maybe you or some of your viewers know how to look on these questions. One, I am working in a vape shop myself, but on my free time, I do reviews for all the shops here in Sweden under the name Grizzly Vapor. Can the TPD law in any way stop me from doing that? I don't know, but I am going to just go out on a ledge here and say, I don't think the TPD in any way can stop you from being a YouTube reviewer of vapor products. It certainly won't get in the way of you working in your shop other than the products you might have to carry. But no, I don't believe that the TPD can affect you as a YouTuber. I would honestly like to hear, look, if anybody, um, Dean, if Dean the Vaping Biker is watching this or if someone can tag Dean in this and tell him to come comment on this, I'd like to know because Dean's in the UK, which is heavily affected by the TPD, and Dean's running a great channel over there and shows no signs of slowing down. So I would go ahead and say that I don't think the TPD can stop you from doing that. Second question is, where is the line between information and commercials? So this... That's a big question. Let me read the rest of your email before we answer that. I really look at my YouTube as a way to help people stop smoking. I see it like a mission to save lives, and now I don't know how to go on with it and how to interpret the TPD laws. We are late in Sweden to implement the TPD law, so maybe you or someone that already works with this law knows. Keep on vaping and keep up the good work. You rock. Best regards, Victor Grizzly Vapor. Ostman, thank you for your time. And uh, when I did meet you at the Beyond Vape Sweden, that's awesome. And by the way, how did your tattoo? Yeah, my tattoo, my Sweden tattoo here 
turned out great. It he, it was a rough healer and it, it was rough, Victor, because I didn't take care of it. It's rough because I didn't take care of it and, and I listened to Matthias and, and I should not have listened to Matthias. I should have trusted my own skin. Sorry, it's just been a hot minute since I vaped. I was just talking a lot and I thought, I miss vaping. Here we go. We're going to pause for a vape intermission. Join me, won't you? So back to the line between information and commercial. So here's the thing. Commercials still contain information. If you want something that is not a commercial, you can't partake or watch someone or something or any videos that have a disclaimer. If there's a disclaimer that they put up there that says this is a paid advertisement and it happens a lot on Instagram and it happens a lot on YouTube as well. And Instagram allows you to, let's say that, uh, Ryu Nick salt paid me a thousand bucks to, to pimp out this juice for the record. They did not pay me a thousand dollars to pimp out this juice. But if they had paid me $1,000 to pimp out this juice before this video, I, I would put a disclaimer. Like this is a paid advertise. This includes paid advertisements from Ryu from anyone that, that paid me. Nobody paid me. Hell Vape didn't pay me. But if they did, I would say this video includes paid promotions from Ryu Nick Saltz, from Hell Vape, from whoever else. It's something that on YouTube and in social media, you kind of have to disclose. The rules on it are very, very lax, according to the FTC. FTC, FCC. Federal Trade Commission, FTC. The FTC doesn't really enforce this, but they they strongly urge people to disclose things like this. It's very highly recommended if you want to remain on the up and up with the FTC, then you, you have to disclose if something is a paid sponsorship, which is why, you know, I follow a lot of uh, people on Instagram that do a lot of paid promotions. I follow people like, I mean, it's mostly vape models if we're being real honest, but I follow people like Just Peachy, who's a wonderful person. I follow people like Pandora Blue. I follow her, her boy toy, uh, Turbo 616. I follow a lot of people and you can see on Instagram underneath their little name, it says paid partnership with Times Vape, paid partnership with Vandy Vape, paid partnership with insert vape company here. Those are paid posts. And so they kind of look like lifestyle posts in the same way that, you know, if you're holding the bottle and you're like this and you're like, check out Ryu Nick Salt uh, flavor, check this out. Then that's a, that's a paid promotion and they have to disclose that. If that doesn't bother you, which it doesn't really bother me if something is a paid promotion or not, as long as it's being disclosed, I think that's where you can draw the line between someone who just likes this panzer, like I just like this panzer and I'm going to vape it and I'm going to tell you how much I like it while I vape it. And I do really like it. But I think that's the difference between someone who's uh, just giving information out and someone who is being paid to promote a certain product. You have to disclose it. I think that's kind of where it goes. And there's, you know, there's a lot of gray areas. Um, I, I generally disclose everything. If I'm being paid for anything, I'm all, I've always disclosed of that, especially when I talk about things like, oh, the Grim Green Me Pods. Yeah, this is my product. Of course it's my product. It has my name on it. I directly benefit if someone buys this. We have these available on recoilrda.com. That's mine and Dwayne's website where we sell things as a business to make profits. And so when things like this come up or like recoil, recoil rebel, all the Namber juice stuff, all my merch on recoilrda.com, that's stuff that directly benefits me. That's that's my that's my business. My name is on that. That's indistinguishable. That is clearly something that I benefit from. But there's times, maybe online, maybe on the internet, maybe on Instagram or YouTube, where it's very unclear. You know, is is this is this a paid promotion? Is this not a paid promotion? It's something that should be disclosed, but not. 
I don't think everybody discloses it. Like in my description below, if I link to Vapor DNA, that's that's my one affiliate that I use. If you buy something from my link, Vapor DNA, I get a little kickback from that. I get a little jingle from that. It's not a ton, but it's a little bit, and it really does help out. And so I put a little disclaimer down in my description. All Vapor DNA links below are paid affiliate links. They are the only affiliate links I use. I put that disclaimer down there so people in the description know that if I say uh, this broadside from Vapor DNA, which is a bad example because the broadside is not available on Vapor DNA, but if I go, yeah, this broadside, I love it. I think everybody should buy one and you should definitely use the Vapor DNA link down below. If I say that and everybody uses that Vapor DNA link below, I'm making money off that, but I didn't disclose the fact that I am making money off that. And that, the, the when money comes into the equation, people, you know, it can change your views of what people are saying about things. It's, it's just an interesting psychological thing that happens. I've been vaping this Ryu Nick Salt that I picked up at ECC and they didn't, they didn't pay me for it and I'm just using it and I'm using it because I like it. But would it be a difference if I was using this because I like it and they paid me, or is there a difference if I'm just using this and I like it just because I like it? It's an interesting thing to think about, and it's an interesting thing that's like completely, it's not necessarily a new thing, but it's unique to the time that we live in where people on Instagram can make a living off of Instagram, where people on YouTube can make a living off of YouTube. So the whole idea of this is me being a genuine person telling you genuinely how I feel about things, but I could be getting paid in certain places. And, and if I am, then you'll know it. But does that change the opinion of the person when money gets involved? I think that's a really interesting topic. In fact, I would like to get your thoughts down in the comments below. And this is something I, I would honestly, Sorry, I was vaping. And this is something I would really genuinely, honestly love to get your comments on down in the comments be below. Pardon me, I have gases and hiccups and weird shit happening. Hang on. Because uh, maybe next week, and I know I've said this in the past and never followed through because I'm bad at following through on things, but maybe next week, this is something we can open up again. I'd like to get your thoughts in the comments below. How do you feel? How do you feel about things like paid, posts, paid sponsorship, advertising, you know, where do you, where do you draw the line between information and like a paid commercial type of situation? Is it always that easy to detect? Interesting, interesting topic. Nonetheless, Victor, thank you for bringing that up. And thank you for sending in a viewer mail. If anybody else has any viewer mails that they would like to see answered on this here show, you can send them on over nickgrimgreen.com. Just mark it viewer mail. They all get read. I have a big file here of just mountains of viewer mails, but I could always use some more viewer mails. So send them on over. Anyway, we're getting close. We're getting close to the end of this here vlog. In fact, it is time to do a very random juice tasting. Or, you know, if you're Kent, oh, this isn't random. Let me knock over all your vape stuff, Nick. Wow, it's, it's almost like Kent was here. Anyway, this is not a very random juice tasting. This is the third juice that we have tasted from Culinary Confections. I got their Bonanza juice, which is a banana flavor. It's a banana and walnuts and bakery, and it's, it's just a delicious flavor. And that was the first one I tried, and I really fell in love with it. Then last week, we tried that watermelon sugar cookie flavor that I was really very on the fence about. I continued vaping it throughout the rest of the day and then it got into the night and I went, no, this, this juice just, it's just not for me. So lastly, we have Mellow from Culinary Confections, which looks to be a cantaloupe milkshake. And I know earlier in the viewer mails, we were talking about what flavors do you disagree with? You know, what flavors don't you like in a juice? Cantaloupe is one of them that I've never really super enjoyed. So I'm really interested to try this juice. I'm really interested to see how I feel about it. And it's a chubby gorilla, freshly sealed, so it's impossible to open. Uh. Nope. Ah, oh, 
Finally. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, they, I see it on Esig City. I couldn't find the Culinary Confections website, but we'll find it on Esig City. That's fine. Uh, the cool taste of cantaloupe, coupled with a delicious flavor of vanilla shake, makes for one satisfying b- blend, both refreshing and rich. Mellow utilizes the highest grade of flavors with the perfect ratios in order to bring you a taste so explosive you can almost feel yourself biting into a juicy cantaloupe before washing it all down with a premium vanilla shake. I've never bit into a juicy cantaloupe. Um, they have to cut it first, right? Bam. I'm just kidding. Anyway, Mellow, let's give this a, let's give this a little bit of a knuckle test first. Uh, it, it's vanilla milkshakey. I get a strong, strong vanilla milkshake in there, a little bit lower on the cantaloupe, which kind of makes me excited. Um, For no real rhyme or reason, I'm going to be vaping this out of that ghoul RDA, that single coil ghoul RDA, just because it's so easy to wick. This is one of those really easy things to wick. And when you're doing a lot of random juice tastings, you want something that's easy to wick. If anybody remembers way back in the day, I mean, this is what, two years ago now? I was using that original uh, Faro, that original Faro drip tank for essentially the same reason. It was a really satisfying vape, but it was a nice, quick, easy single coil that, man, it was just so easy to wick. Anyway, let me juice this up and stop talking. Vapors. All right, cool. Well, we got Mellow from Culinary Confections loaded up in the Ghoul RDA single coil Fiends frame staple in there, 0.23, 66 watts. Let's give it a shot. Huh. All right. Well, as usual, I am going to sit back. I'm going to vape a bunch of this and then we're going to come back and talk about it. Okay, here we go. This juice is good. <laughs> this juice is really good. The cantaloupe in it isn't like a Halloween masky cantaloupe at all. In fact, the predominant flavor that I get out of this juice, out of this particular setup in different atomizers or tanks, your vi- your mileage might vary, you know, depending on what application you're using it in. But in this particular RDA, up front, vanilla milkshake. I get a huge rush of vanilla milkshake with a very sort of whisper, maybe a little bit higher than a whisper of cantaloupe, a very sweet, very natural tasting cantaloupe. And then I get another flavor in there that I can't quite place. It kind of tastes like graham crackers or something. Like there's a little bit of bakery involved in this and maybe it's the vanilla that they use, but it's a, it's a intensely creamy vanilla milkshakey with just the right amount of cantaloupe in it. I feel like if they had added another quarter percent of, of cantaloupe into this recipe, it would have been too much cantaloupe. I think they, they nailed it perfectly. It's incredibly well balanced. And I mean, that first toot I took, I knew that I was going to like it. I was, I was like, yeah, this is a, this is a good juice. Yeah, it's good. It's vanilla milkshake and cantaloupe. It's a little bit on the refreshing side, but it's mostly a rich, sort of a rich flavor. And there's still that very little hint of some sort of bakery thing going on there. And like I said, it could be their vanilla, but I almost feel like there is a small, small percentage of like a graham cracker type of flavor in this as well. It's as well. It's not very predominant. Like it's not something that jumps out at you right away. It's a little, it's a little bit of a delicate flavor in there, but shit, man, mellow. It's good. Good job, culinary confections. Two out of three for me. That that's good. You're you're batting good odds right there. Yeah, just cantaloupe, milkshake, vanilla, a creamy, creamy vanilla, and that nice cantaloupe flavor in there. It's so well balanced. Damn, it's good. All right. If there's one thing that I love more than anything, it's being surprised by things that you weren't expecting to surprise you. I love it when it happens with vape gear, and I especially love it when it happens with liquids and you just try a random juice that you suddenly fall in love with. That's why I'm a big advocate of trying as many juices as you possibly can, because there is a world of, of, I mean, unbelievable liquids out there. And now I get to add mellow to one of those liquids that like, 
yeah, dude, I dig it. I dig this liquid. I dig it. I dig it a lot. I'm honestly surprised I like a cantaloupe-based flavor this much. All right, well, anyway, that's Mellow Culinary Confections. Uh, it's good. It's good. It's, it's one of those things. It's good. If you want to check it out, if you're looking for, like, a really creamy vanilla milkshake cantaloupe flavor, this is it. This is the one that I've tried, and it's the one that I like. Damn. Damn good. Damn hell ass good. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we're winding down. We're winding down to the end of the vlog here. We're gonna we're gonna move on from our very random juice tasting to your favorite segment, my favorite segment, all of our favorite segments. It's time for comments of the week. <laughs> Just the way that I said that reminded me of that Family Guy bit where they're doing uh, the family food. He's like. No, 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 it's not Family Feud. It's in the, the post-apocalyptic uh, world. Family Guy was in it for some reason. Show me potato salad. I don't know why. It just reminded me of that. Anyway, food, we have some favorite comments of the week. And as promised, we are going to do a very quick getting to know Nico from Finland. So Nico from Finland is one of my, I don't know, interns? He's a helper guy. He helps me out completely voluntarily, and he sends me screen caps of some favorite comments of the week, just some random comments that he runs across, and he sends them to me, and I'm forever grateful. So let's right now do a getting to know Nico from Finland. Once again, Nico, thank you, thank you, thank you for helping capture favorite comments of the week. I truly, truly do appreciate it. But Nico wrote to me and said, hey, Nick, Nico, N-I-K-O, from Finland here once again. I just want to share some random facts about me with you. Number one, I'm 22 years old. My birthday is August 30th. Well, come August 30th, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you're going to, happy birthday, bro. Number two, I've been playing electric guitar for almost 12 years. I really love it and enjoy it very much. Well, let me ask you this in return, Nico. Are you, uh, uh, like in a, like a metal guy. I know uh, Finland is pretty well steeped, well versed in metal. Are you are you a metal fan, sir? Number three, I've been vaping for almost three years. I started vaping May 29th, 2015. Congratulations, three years, bangin'. I'm engaged to the best and sweetest person in the world, and I love her very much. We've been together for almost four years, and our anniversary is on August 15th. Oh, congratulations! God, I love a good love story. P.S. Sorry for the long email. I just wanted to. Share Share some random facts about me. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. Keep up the great work. Stay metal. And yes, let's keep on vaping. So Nico, I'm guessing you're into the metal and that makes me very, very happy. By the way, he says, uh, he sent me another follow-up email. By the way, I didn't mention my fiance's name. Her name is Mila and she vapes too. She's been vaping for almost three years, just like me. Absolutely. Nico, I can't thank you enough. Shout out to you and Mila. I, I hope you guys are get married and, and are happy and just have the happiest life ever. And thank you once again for helping me out with some favorite comments of the week, which are somewhere over here in this particular folder. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> First comment of the week comes from a fellow named Bradley, a very matter of fact statement. He just said, your favorite band is Clutch. That is probably the most accurate thing that anybody has ever written in a YouTube comment. But it doesn't come without some controversy. So I say my favorite band is Clutch. My favorite band is Clutch. My actual favorite band is Guar. I love Guar more than I love every other band that has ever existed. But I'm not always in the mood for Guar. I have to be ready to listen to Guar. I especially love Odorous Urungus era Guar. I have nothing against, uh, you know, the, the new singer guy, Mike Bishop, uh, Blothar. Got nothing against him. Saw Guar with Blothar as their singer, and they killed it. They still sound amazing and I love their new stuff, but I'm especially fond of Odorous Urungus era Guar, like Scum Dogs of the Universe, America Must Be Destroyed. America Must Be Destroyed is probably one of the most important albums in my life, which is a really weird thing to say, but I listened to it when I was the ripe young age of 14 years old and I absolutely, I mean, just head over heels, fell in love with Guar. America Must Be Destroyed was one of those CDs that just never left my CD player. Yes, back in the day, 
Dude, we had CD players. But it was a CD that I just, it never came out of my CD player. I put it, I made a copy of it and put it on a tape. And whenever we would go on road trips, I would just listen to Guar, America Must Be Destroyed, front to back, front to back, over and over, over and over, flip it over, listen to it, flip it over, listen to it for hours on end. I love Guar. And with that said, Clutch is my favorite band. I love Clutch. I'm always in the mood to listen to Clutch. If I hear a Clutch song, even just in passing, I will listen to it. I will listen to the whole song. I love Clutch. I, I adore Neil Fallon. I, I love his voice, and I, I think they're a great band. And so, yes, now that that was another little little getting to know Grim Green, my favorite band is Clutch, also Guar. Oh, oh no, we ha okay, we have a poop story, you guys. So if you don't, if you don't want to hear the poop story, just skip ahead to this timestamp right here because I'm about to tell a poop story from a subscriber. I get, uh, I find poop stories very entertaining, and it's not even necessarily like a poop story, but I just find intestinal distress stories incredibly interesting because I can relate to it. And sometimes it's completely out of our control, and that is when it's funny. So Tristan. He left a comment and said, uh, here's a fantastic intestinal distress story for the favorite comments. And again, if anybody else has any, I don't want a ton of intestinal distress stories, but a few here and there uh, might be quite entertaining for the vlog here. He says, so I'm leaving to go to work in the morning and I can't find my car keys anywhere. I spent a solid two hours searching my entire house for these goddamn keys. Then I remembered that my throat was really sore. And when I woke up, I had somehow convinced myself that I had swallowed my car keys in my sleep, which isn't out of the ordinary. I used to know someone who thought they swallowed something in their sleep as well. So it's not, that's a psychological thing that happens in our brain sometimes. I mean, I've heard of people eating nickels in their sleep, so it sounded reasonable. I loaded up on laxatives and wait. I can't let these keys fall down the toilet hole or I'm fucked, so I end up shitting into a strainer and no keys. Long story short, they were in the couch cushion. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I hope it's true. Look, I don't want anybody making up intestinal distress stories, okay? I'm trusting you guys to be truthful. Don't embellish anything because an intestinal distress story is good on its own. There's no need for embellishment. So I can, <laughs> Tristan, shitting on a strainer because you thought you swallowed your keys. Wow, that's uh. That's quite the story right there. Anyway, on to non-intestinal dis... Although I think I have another one, but on to non-intestinal distress favorite comments of the week. Uh, Solomon, who's one of my patrons, he just asked, whatever happened to Kanger Tech? And then Edward chimed in and said, Solomon, their shit died when Smoke's shit took over. Battle of the shit companies and Smoke won. <laughs> uh, I would... Uh, I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I agree with that statement. Hey, Kanger used to be uh, used to be real big. They used to be uh, kind of the boss. They had a lot of good products out, and they were really. I mean, Kanger Tech was kind of at the top of the of the food chain there, and then yeah, other companies took over. That's just the way the free market works. Um, Smoke did shittier, cheaper products, and so everybody start, everybody started buying shitty. Shitty smoke products. Not a big fan of smoke. Anybody that's new here to this vlog, I don't think that's going to be a, a huge surprise. Just I'm just overall not a big fan of smoke. I, I, I've never been a big fan of smoke. I've never really enjoyed any of the products they've released. So yeah, I agree with Edward when I say uh, battle of the shit companies and smoke one. Uh oh, okay. Well, here we go. Here's another intestinal distress story. We're calling these intestinal distress stories, not poop stories. So Tom, Tom is going to tell us the story of the Texas chili hole. So buckle up. If you like poop stories, I need to tell the Texas chili hole story. It was my 13th birthday, I believe. And my friend and I stayed up all night that morning. We went to another friend's house and I proceeded to fall asleep on my stomach with my pants kind of sagging. So my boxers were showing. My buddies decided to pour hot sauce down my butt crack while I was sleeping. I woke up maybe 30 minutes later, not knowing what was going on due to being disoriented from lack of sleep. I get back home after a five minute walk and my ass was on fire. I ended up losing control of my bowels while I was sleeping and I had just a mess of poo everywhere. I ended up taking a bath and was scrubbing my butt on the bathtub like a dog scratching his ass on the carpet. It was the worst pain of my life, but one of the funniest pranks. And that be the story of the Texas chili hole. <laughs> now, that is, uh, that's a, that's a crazy prank and... Listen, Dwayne, 
Homeboy OC, my, my nearest and dearest bro, don't get any fucking funny ideas, man. I don't want to wake up in a hotel room. I don't want to wake up in an RV on tour with chili sauce, spicy chili sauce poured down my butt crack. That's that's where I'm going to draw the line on pranks. I'll vape a tampon. I'll vape your nasty ass fucking rubber tire smelling e-liquid that you make for me. But uh, I, I preferably would not like hot sauce on the ass. Also, Tom, I'm really concerned as to why this is called the Texas Chili Hole story. D- do you call it your Texas Chili Hole? Is that is that where we're going with this? Okay, I'm sorry, Tom. Thank you for the intestinal <laughs> distress story. Ah, oh, those are so hilarious. And then we're going to wrap this up. Uh, Heretic Vapor calling me out on the things that I say. He just left a comment and said, hashtag millimeter. <laughs> yeah. So millimeter, millimeter is one of those things that just slips out every once in a while. I'll say things like millimeter. I say it wrong. I say millimeter accidentally sometimes. I pronounce uh, niachrome wrong. Everyone says it's not niachrome, it's niachrome. And I feel like I'm saying it right, but evidently all I do is say it wrong. So I say things like millimeter. I say things like spankin. Like, what was that? And that review I did this week, what review was that? I said spankin. That's not even a word. But I mispronounce things like niachrome, like millimeter. It's just one of those things. Just one of those. I say delrin or darylin sometimes instead of delrin. I don't know why I do it. It's just one of those things. It's just a, a fragment of a memory that's stuck in my head that I can't seem to move past. And I say things like millimeter and Darylin. Anyway, that's going to wrap up favorite comments of the week. And because of that, this is definitely going to wrap up the vlog. We're done here. Let me take a quick look and make sure I didn't forget anything. Nope, you're there. All right. Yeah, we're good. We're all good. We are here at the end of the vlog. And I say this every week and I'm going to say it again right now. Everyone that makes it to the end of the vlog, You are absolutely my favorite people on earth. If we ever meet in real life, I definitely owe you a hug or I also dispense very crisp high fives. But that's what I got, everybody. That's it. We're at the end of the vlog. Uh, I want to thank you so much for watching. What am I going to grab? I don't know what I'm going to grab. Got to go with the Panzer. Got to go with the Aquitas? Equitas? Toss. Someone tell me how to pronounce this, please. I'm going to go with the Panzer Equitas Bro Trip combo just because I'm loving it. These three things together are three th- things that are good together. Apparently, I don't know how to end vlogs anymore. Anyway, that's what I got, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, yeah, let's keep on vaping. This is a bitch and I have to snap together.